Uh, Sean, our meteorologist, let's learn more about how NASA is studying the Earth and Sun relationship during this eclipse. Sean, can you tell us more about that? Right, thanks, Dwayne. So during the eclipse, the moon acts like a giant cloud as it passes over areas in the path of totality, ca casting a large shadow on Earth's surface. Now, the footage you're seeing right now shows... solar eclipse that occurred in March of 2016 over Indonesia. That experience helped us determine how best to study today's eclipse. These images were taken by NASA's EPIC instrument aboard NOAA's Deep Space Climate Observatory, or DISCOVER. It's just one of the instruments we'll be using today to study the eclipse as we monitor changes in Earth's energy balance. Scientists have made extensive atmospheric measurements during eclipses before, but this is the first opportunity to collect coordinated data from both the ground and from a spacecraft that observes the entire sunlit Earth during an eclipse. Dwayne, back to you. Thank you, Sean. Okay, so now we have a special guest with us today, the Associate Administrator for NASA's Office of Communication, Jen Ray Wong. Jen Ray, welcome. Dwayne, thank you. So happy to be here. Oh, it's an exciting day. It's a wonderful I'm glad you're day. to join the team here. And our next location you are pretty familiar with, I'm sure. I'm very blessed and I do know something about the great state of Nebraska. I've actually lived there for the last decade. And I have friends and family who are watching there from the Path of Totality. I have to tell you, this is by far the biggest thing that's happened in Nebraska as of recent. It's absolutely fabulous. I have had friends from high school and college calling me up, Facebook messaging me, asking where they can get their glasses, where they should be viewing from. So it's just a really exciting day for everyone who's watching along the path of totality. It's also a really exciting day for NASA. And in fact, this gives us an opportunity to look forward as well. And we have a future study that we are going to be doing for the stu to study the sun. NASA is going to launch a new spacecraft next year, the Parker Solar Probe, and it will fly directly into the solar atmosphere. The mission will provide first of its kind data, and for more information on this future mission, let's go to Beatrice, Nebraska, where Vince Whitfield from NASA's Langley Research Center is standing by. He's at Homestead National Monument, where the National Park Service has coordinated an eclipse viewing. Vince? And just just, just in, I think uh, we're having, Vince is going to come up shortly. Jen Ray, so we're going to go back with an image, but we will be doing Nebraska as soon as we can. So a shout out to the great state. Thank you. Okay, folks, um, Jody and Alex, um, this is a different view here. What are we seeing, uh, Alex? Well, so we're looking at uh, a different wavelength of visible light. It's called calcium K. So this is light that's produced by excited calcium. And this is showing us the sun as the moon is moving over it. And in fact, if you look over to the left, on the edge of the yeah. sun, you actually see sunspots. A sunspot, yeah. And these are regions that Heliophysicists like myself and Jari are most interested in because that's where solar explosions originate from. In fact, the magnetic fields that come up into the corona that we see during the total solar eclipse originate from those sunspots. Yeah. Actually, this sunspot had a, a solar flare yesterday. Right, and I believe this is coming from, from Carbondale. So that's now it's it's uh why is it purple is that what, what's the that's color actually mean? that's actually the uh the the light and the color of the light in the filter the color is a bluish light and so it comes out as a purple color um but it's in it is a type of visible light it's one we look at quite often from both space and the ground and look in the sun now i see what i see some black 
thingies. Look like a little river. You see it over there and then the corner on the left? Yeah, that's the sunspots. Uh, now, what's the sunspot, just for our audience here? Those are the regions where most of the space weather actually originates, the solar flares, the coronal mass ejections, are regions of the sun that have very uh, complicated magnetic fields. And these are where the, most of the magnetic energy is actually uh, released. Right, so those are regions of super intense magnetic field, thousand times stronger than the Earth's magnetic field. And those have lots of energy, and they drive space weather. Okay, I think that's why we didn't get the Nebraska feed right now. Those things cause that, I think, right? That's right. <laughs> we're getting a little glitch. Hopefully we get Nebraska. Okay, Sean, we're going back over to you. We'll talk about moon shattering. Wayne, we've got some really incredible imagery for you. This is again from the GO-16 weather satellite just launched last year by NASA for our friends at NOAA. And what you're seeing in the uh, western portion of this image is actually the moon's shadow being cast over parts of the path of totality. And of course, you see the cloud cover across the U.S. as well. And as I was telling you earlier, it's actually looking pretty good for most of the western parts of the U.S. that are in the path of totality. Uh, not so good for maybe parts of the uh, central U.S., uh, where we've got some thunderstorm activity developing uh, and expected to develop uh, later today, this afternoon, for places like uh, Nebraska, parts of Nebraska, and uh, Missouri, and, and northern Illinois, so maybe north of Carbondale. And then gets better again, as you uh, see, uh, in terms of cloud cover as we move further east toward Charleston here. But here in Charleston, we still have some breaks in the cloud. Where the sun is, it's still obscured. But we are able to actually see some of the uh, partial eclipse here in Charleston through some of the breaks in cloud. But again, really wanted to show you guys that imagery from GO-16 satellite from NOAA showing you the uh, moon's shadow actually being cast over parts of the western United States right now. With that, Dwayne, I'm going to hand it back over to you. Thanks, Sean. Now, as a reminder, our broadcast is tracking the total solar eclipse as it crosses the United States. It's moving along a path of totality. That's a 70-mile wide path sweeping across the entire nation. Over 12 million people live inside the path of totality. Plus, it's estimated that close to 7 million people have traveled to cities within the path of totality. I know that today is truly a day of celebration as people gather in cities and festivals to view today's celestial event. So let's, let's get into the cultural impact here, guys. Um, Alex, what's your take on the cultural impact of these eclipses? Well, you know, this is really such a, a, a fantastic opportunity to connect the nation and, in fact, the world with nature's, one of nature's most amazing celestial events. And this is something that we, as uh, working at NASA, are really excited to be able to share. And, in fact, We've even worked with some of our colleagues in other parts like the U.S. Postal Service. Yes, the U.S. Postal Service actually created a special stamp for this event. Right. Fact, so what I want to do, yes. let's talk about the stamp. Sure. But generate toss in Nebraska. We, the sunspots are gone. So let's go to Nebraska. Vince Whitfield, are you there? Hi, we're at the Homestead National Monument of America. This is a great location to watch the eclipse, and we've staked out a good spot here on the prairie. Even though the weather isn't cooperating, this is still an excellent event. We're also very prepared. Please make sure to use your protective glasses when viewing the eclipse wherever you are. You can cause serious damage to your eyes if you don't take precautions while watching. And there are a lot of people watching. As you can tell, the festivities, just like the eclipse, are in full swing. I'm joined by Chief Park Ranger Susan Cook. Hey Vince, how are you? Great Susan, thanks for joining me today. Please tell us about this amazing uh, place and what's going on behind us. Well, we are at Homestead National Monument of America. We are a national park site dedicated to telling the story of homesteading. 30 states, 4 million people, 10% of the United States was homesteaded. The head of a household, anybody could own land as long as you could be a U.S. citizen. You got 160 acres. It's how we settled the West. We built our democracy, we built our economy, settling the West through this law. That is just so interesting. Now, I understand the Mayan calendar followed the solar eclipse calendar closely. Is, is that correct? Uh, it did. The, the, Mayan, the ancient Mayan used several different calendars to organize their secular and spiritual lives. Many of these calendars had strong roots in the motions of celestial objects, especially the sun and the moon. And the Hub calendar is a solar calendar of 365 days, subdivided into 18 months of 20 days, plus one month of five days, Another calendar is the Zulkan, made of 260 days, subdivided into 13 months of 20 days. This calendar also has a resonance with eclipses. 
which occur about every 173 days. Every three sequences.